to look at a second example that is somewhat more complicated, we want to find the volume of a wedge that is cut out of a circular cylinder of radius 3 by one plane perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder and another that crosses the first plane at a 45 degree angle along a diameter of the disc forming the cross section of the cylinder by the first plane. That sounds complicated. Well, let's try to see what that means. There is a cylinder, let's say of radius 3, and we the first plane um, is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder, so let's call that P1, and this uh, plane P1 is going to cut the cylinder along a disc, that is uh, the disc that we see at the bottom. Then we have a second plane that is going to intersect the first one along a diameter, let's say along this diameter, of the diameter. Um, so this is going to be the intersection of the two planes, this dotted line. And it does that at a 45 degree angle. So if I take um, as a system of coordinates in P1, in the plane P1, the first plane, this diameter that I picked and an axis that is perpendicular to it, so these two lines here are in the plane P1, then I take um, an angle of 45 degrees with um, this new axis of coordinates and the plane, the second plane that I'm considering is going to contain two lines, the dotted line and the line at 45 degrees with the axis. Therefore it's going to look like that and intersect the cylinder along a parabola that looks like this and therefore the wedge is going to look something like this, well more precisely if we forget the rest of the cylinder it's going to look so our wedge looks like this now in this picture um, we have a typical cross section by a plane x equal constant and we have various lengths that are represented so let's try to understand this a little bit better and justify uh, why the length of one of the edges is 2 root of 9 minus x square, while the other is x and so on. So first of all, we have in the xy plane uh, half a circle, half a disc to be more specific, and um, the circle that borders this disc has equation x square plus y square equal 9 in the xy plane. Therefore, when we solve for y, we get plus or minus square root of 9 minus x square. The plus square root of 9 minus x square corresponds to the upper half circle. Ma negative square root of 9 minus x square corresponding to the lower half circle. That means that this point here that has first coordinate x, a second coordinate root of 9 minus x square. And this one that has first coordinate x, a second coordinate negative root of 9 minus x square. And therefore, this line segment has length 2 root of 9 minus x square, and so does this one, and you see that we have a rectangular cross section. To see the length of the other side, which is claimed to be x here, consider this right triangle. It's a right triangle, and one of the other angles is 45 degrees, and therefore the other is also 45 degrees because the sum of the angles is 180. And that means it's a, a isosceles triangle since the uh, base, the uh, segment that is in the xy plane has length x, so does the other side, and that justifies that this vertical dotted red line has length x. And so does this one. So the cross section here is a rectangle whose sides are of length x and 2 root of 9 minus x squared. Therefore, the area of the cross section by x equal constant is given by 2x multiplied by root of 9 minus x squared. And since the volume of the wedge is given by the integral of this area of the cross section from 0 to 3, we get for the volume, 
the integral from 0 to 3 of 2x root of 9 minus x squared. To calculate that, we're going to proceed by substitution because you see that we have the function 9 minus x squared plugged inside the square root function and then outside we have a constant multiple of the derivative of 9 minus x squared. So it is natural to uh, use u equal 9 minus x squared in which case du is negative 2x dx and noting that when x is 0 u is 9 and x equals 3 u is 0 we replace 2x dx by negative du then we have root of 9 minus x squared is root u and then for the lower bound we get 9 for the upper bound we get 0 now of course I can switch the sign and switch the bounds and I obtain the integral from 0 to 9 of square root of u du an antiderivative of root u is 2 third u to the 3 half and I need to evaluate this antiderivative between 0 and 9 the value at 0 is going to be 0 the value at 9 9 to the 3 half is 9 to the 1 half which is 3 that's your cube so we get 27 and we get 2 thirds of 27 27 over 3 is 9 so we get 18 now turn to the next video to see how we apply this technique to the particular case of solid revolutions